And talk to Strider after the game last night. He was really candid. He said that uh, he thought the Phillies play with a lot of energy, confidence in a postseason. He said that he thinks some of the things that work for you guys so well over the course of 162, the even kill, the, the not to get too high, too low, all that, don't really help as much in a concentrated environment of a postseason series. He thinks you need to kind of improve your focus or change your focus for the postseason. Do you have any thoughts about that at all? Do you think it was said in the heat of the moment or? Yeah, I haven't. I mean, I talked to him after he came out of the game. I thought he was awesome. I think I told him, I said, you know what? That's he's a one. He's bulldog cares. Um, you know, it's um, he's everything you want. So, um, you know, again, how I, I don't, I mean, I think, look, like anything, we're starting the process now. I've been, I've been, you know, doing a lot of stuff today, um, going through stuff. I think like anything, once you don't win the World Series, you review everything, right? So I think you look at everything and examine everything. So I don't think you can rule anything out. Um, bottom line is we didn't get to where we wanted to get to or expected to. And, um, you know, and I don't know that we'll have the answer today. I bet you he'd tell you the same thing. But um, like anything else, we just you start the process of dissecting all of it in season playoffs, all that stuff. To follow to follow up on that, I mean, I he was talking about kind of just a postseason approach, kind of like Dave said. Uh, what changes can even be made to that? Cause it seems like something that baseball people talk about as a crap shoot. And you guys talk about as some sort of randomness. H how do you, I guess, try to control the factors within something so random? I mean, look, we've, since I've been here, this is six years in the postseason. Um, look, one of them resulted in a world series. So, um, but every season has been different. Every playoff run has been different. Right. So, um, for some of these guys, it was the first for Spencer. It's the second, um, bunch of guys that were on that world series winning team were part of it as well. Right. So, um, I think we always reflect on things. We review, look, nobody has a, the exact formula. Otherwise if somebody would be winning, you, you know, but I think that's what makes, what makes baseball great is that you're constantly looking for answers, um, in terms of what gets you to a world series. So, um, I, I think I've said this in an interview earlier. I can look back at every every playoff run and, and take something away from it. And I'm already dissecting some of that now. I'm not ready to come up with any hard and fast answers. Um, but look, like, you know, we talked a lot about in the past. Well, we got off to slow. Felt like we got off to slow starts a lot in the six years I've been here. Maybe not 18, but the other years, it seems like we got off to slow starts. This past year, we didn't, you know, and we made some adjustments. Um, We've gotten better during the season, you know, in terms of our regular season performance, this is by far the best one since I've, I've been here. Right. So um, in the postseason, we had one of the years in 20, we go to the CS, get to game seven, but we have a three, one lead. The next year we win the world series, uh, either the past two, we get eliminated um, in the first round. But I think just, um, it, it, they don't mirror each other. There's all, there's all variances to the opponents, to the roster, to the health of guys, to how guys are performing. Um, and like I said, unless someone's winning three, four in a row, um, I, I don't know that there's one thing you can point to. I do know you need to get back in uh, in order to give yourself an opportunity. Um, but I mean, we obviously can dissect it's four games and look, they're, four most important games of the year or, you know, in, in our case, we hoped it was going to be five. So, um, but I, I don't know that you can, I don't think anybody can tell you this is exactly what, you know, what the answer is. Alex with, you know, last year it was easy to say, Hey, you had, you know, freed and Strider were weaker or, you know, weakened by ailments entering there this year. It's simple to say, you know, you didn't hit. Is, it, is there something that when you, Last night, as you thought about it, or this morning, where you said, if this would have been different, you know, beyond the offense or with the offense, uh, things might have been different. The result might have been Yeah, I mean, changed. look, I, yeah, I think it's human nature, right? You're always going to dissect. You're doing that a lot. You know, you do it in the moment after each game. Last night, this morning, I was just talking to some of our staff today. Is, you know, my feelings today are probably going to be different tomorrow and Sunday and Monday and every day. 
you keep looking, examining things. I think, look, I think the difference between last year and this year was, um, look, obviously guys weren't a hundred percent last, you know, this past year, we had a lot of opportunities in, in games, right? I mean, there was over uh, five runners in score position game one, uh, obviously game two, we won the game, but you know, we didn't get a hit in that game. till the sixth inning, I believe. Um, and I think through the first two or three games, I think we had three extra base hits. Um, look, we're a team that, that slugs. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I think, I think anyone would doubt that we have a lot of power on this team. We have a lot of slug on this team. We didn't have a lot of extra base hits. We didn't slug in this series. So if you're looking strictly at that specific item, I wouldn't sit there and say, wow, we, you know, we, this team lacks power. This team lacks extra base ability. It doesn't. Now, over a four game stretch that we played, that happened. Um, you know, I know people will say small samples and so on, and I don't want to make excuses. I'm just, you know, your uh, bottom line is you're expected to get it done. Um, we were able to get it done in 21, right? And I remember doing this, and it's the first time I was able to do it and um, say uh, everything we, we did worked. Um, but, you know, I think like anything else, I think the biggest difference in this series is even you look at like we were other than game three, uh, which obviously the score was very lopsided. You know, these games, we were in these games, right? We had opportunities, you know, in game one, obviously game two, we won. And then even in game four, a lot of a lot of opportunities there. And you know, we have elite players. I believe the 500 slugging percentage, I don't think anyone matched or were right there at the top of all time. Definitely the home run totals. I don't know, I think I saw the difference in home run totals was 12 to three. Um, obviously, we have power in the lineup. It didn't happen. That doesn't mean we don't have great players. But it will happen over the course of a series where, you know, guys aren't always going to continue, you know, and maybe if we had gone through this round, the next round, it would have showed up. Right. So, um, I, you know, I feel like, look, these games could have gone some other way. You get the big hit in some other years and series. We got, we got the big hit. Um, we weren't able to, to come through with an elite uh, group of offensive players. Alex, obviously. You All right. Make- One second. Alex. Do you want a phone stand if we get if you if we get one up there to your office? Hold on a second. Let me see if I can lean it up against the camera. All right. How's that? Great. I think, um, I think the, the TVs are appreciative. All right. The, uh, obviously, there are changes every year to the bullpen and the bench. But yeah. when something like this happens two years in a row, the suddenness after two great regular seasons, does it, notwithstanding what you already said, does it suggest at all that you need maybe a more significant move than just the usual kind of off season tweaking. I don't see it that way. I think I, I understand it's two years in a row. It's one coming off a ser- world series in 21. Um, I mean, look, it was two years in a row in 2018, 2019, 2020, we get to game seven of the CS obviously didn't get it done. And then 21, we get it done. Um, I just think the two years are very different. I think, um, you know, just with the health of our rotation, with where it was and so on. Like I said, I I don't remember the exact scores of all those games. I just feel like take away game three with what the final score was. We had opportunities in th- those other games, you know, and you get the big hit, you come through, and look, you feel really good with the players that we have. And some guys in previous playoff years, I mean, you look at Eddie Rosario in 2021, it's 600 in the NLCS. Didn't do the same thing in the World Series. Doesn't make him less of a player or a hitter. You just can't necessarily translate it. Not the same guy wins the CS MVP that wins the World Series MVP and so on. So um, a lot of our guys won the World Series. A lot of this group was part of that World Series winning team. So um, we did not have issues with runners in scoring position during the year. Over four games, we didn't come through. Um, And to make, you know, to, to try to extrapolate from that more than what it is, um, I don't think would be a responsible thing to do. And, and one quick follow-up question. Um, I talked to Snit a couple times this year about the future, his future, and he's, his position was always that he was going to take it one year at a time. I'm just wondering, is there any indication at all that he wouldn't come back for another season? Have you had that conversation? Oh, no, I, I fully expect him. Yeah, I mean, we already... I mean, we obviously we talked a lot after the game and no, there's it's always I mean, 
Freddie talking about we're saying goodbye to players, seeing spring training and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, a- absolutely. Alex, Alex you when have- you've been in first place for basically since day one, there hasn't been many pressured field situations for this team this year. How much of it was the moment getting to them or how much of it was just sports? You know, I, you know, so I, I'm reluctant to say anything that makes it look like I just don't want to make excuses, you know, and I don't because the bottom line is um, the format is, is the format it's tournament. Right. And that's the way it is. So um, I've said this many times, you want to go into the postseason feeling like you have a roster and a team that's capable of winning a world series. You know, that being said, things have to occur and so on. And if we didn't have opportunities, you know, if it's just, you know, we had a bunch of opportunities and you look, you wonder, you get the big hit here and there. How do things change and evolve? But look, that's sports, right? I think of that CS against LA, uh, I believe game one and two, we got the big hit in the bottom of the ninth. We walked them off both times. Um, World Series, we're down, I think, 2-1. We get Dansby at a homer, Soler at a homer. We win th- three to two. Look, we got the big hit in game two. Uh, look, we're also facing really good teams, right? I mean, you're in the postseason, you're facing really good teams. They earn their way there. And, you know, I want to make sure that we give proper credit to the opponent. I mean, Phillies were awesome. They played great. Uh, they're a really good team. And we we got beat. So I don't ever want it, it to come across any more than that. But, you know, I think we can look back and dissect these games. Again, save for the one lopsided score. Um, we were in those games. We were in those games and we had opportunities. And again, like anything else, um, just like, look, there's times they left guys on base too, right? You, know, you come through, but I mean, the one thing I, I, I have no doubt about is that we had a great offensive club and we have great offensive players. Like that's, that, that was clearly a strength. It was, it was historic. It's a young group of guys that are really talented. Um, and look, but it's hard. It's hard to, uh, you know, to have everything click at the same time in, in the playoffs, especially when you're, you're facing great teams. Alex, notwithstanding at, at one point in the season, we were looking at like eight deep starting rotation you guys had, but it's two years in a row. You've gone into the division series with serious questions about your rotation because of, I mean, you got one guy's going to be 40 next year. If he comes back, Max, as great as he is, Two years in a row, he's had ailments. I mean, he's not the biggest, strongest guy. Um, and then Elder just ran out of gas. Is this the off season where maybe, given where you guys are as an elite team, do you have to go out and maybe add a frontline starter? You haven't done that in a while here. Really, really a guy in his prime, a frontline starter. Yeah, I mean, so I'll answer both sides. So the frontline starter piece, uh, I feel like 2020 off season. Charlie Morton ended up being that, you know, we added that frontline starter. I think when we signed him, I don't think I said we're getting a frontline starter, but, you know, we gave him a pretty good co- contract in what our minds was a good contract. And he was our game one starter throughout the playoffs, all the way DSCS World Series. He was, I mean, his performance in 21 was frontline and we went out and got him and he was a target and we did early. So in terms of age of that player, bottom line is we got a front of the rotation guy that slotted, Max down to two, Ian Anderson down to three, and so on. Because Anderson was our two starter, at, you know, in 2020. We had Max as our one, Ian as our two. We did sign Charlie, and he slotted everybody else down. I think all your points that you brought up about the ailments, two years in a row going into the postseason with um, some things that have come up with the rotation, I think extremely fair. I wouldn't argue with any of, you know, the fact that, look, those are the facts. There's no doubt about it. We had a great season, but there's no doubt we were definitely banged up. Um, in terms of how that would shape or influence our off season, I think same thing is I'm going to be very uh, guarded with uh, our potential off season plans. One, we're clearly not even there yet. This is less than 24 hours. Um, but look, I, I think that that's fair. So I, I mean, I I think it's those are real things. Those are real things that that did did occur two years in a row, and something we're definitely going to have to talk about. Alex, uh, reading a little bit of what came out of the Philly side last night, a lot was kind of written or talked about them being, I guess, quote unquote, built for the postseason. Do you do you believe in that, that certain teams are better built for the postseason based on maybe like attitude, edge, makeup, things like that? Or is that maybe sort of, I guess, a, a myth? Uh, I mean, I do think there's certain things that um, 
are important in the postseason. But I don't think that there's a formula, right? Because then whether it's Phillies or any other team, they'd be winning the World Series each year, right? And there's plenty of great teams. And you could talk about the Braves teams um, that either got to the World Series or other teams that got there and didn't win and so on. So, um, no, but look, I think there's no doubt. I've talked about this before. I think power is important. It's hard to string together hits. Uh, we have a ton of power. It didn't materialize. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't still have a ton of power on the roster. And it's not – we hit three home runs in four games. So if I was strictly leaning on the four-game sample, we'd say, well, we better go find some power for, for the lineup, right? But clearly don't feel that way. We have power in, in the lineup. Um, but, um, you know, I think I think like anything else, I mean, you're, you get to the postseason – you just by by nature of getting there, you have a chance to win a World Series. Certainly getting there, and then you need to play well, and things need to happen, and uh, you need to come through. So, uh, other than the power piece, look, of course, you want good bullpen rotation, and so on. But uh, sorry about that. Um, I I would say that uh, you know, they hit a lot of home home runs, and I do think that uh, power is certainly an important part. Alex, with the going back to what you were saying with Dave. Most of the starting pitchers that were available at the trade deadline were, were flops, or they weren't going to may even help you. Um, maybe one or two. If you did strengthen your bullpen at that point in time, is there, as you evaluate, is there something that you say, I, I wish I would have done, made that move? Because I know there weren't, you know, like I said, there weren't that many starting pitchers available. But Sure. Yeah, I, I would. T- so I do that after trade deadline in August, September, and so on, because you don't know what ultimately is going to be a factor um, come the playoffs. So, um, you know, rotation-wise of the players we looked into, inquired into, I I don't think with how things played out, um, no regrets there. Uh, Bullpen-wise, I think our, you know, our main, sorry, our main uh, guys at the end of the the game – I believe the majority of those guys didn't give up runs. Um, our late, late inning group, uh, majority of guys didn't. So, you know, th- those guys, by and large, did a very good job. Um, look, I'd say from an offensive standpoint, we faced a lot of left-handed relievers. Uh, obviously, we faced Suarez twice, left-handed starter. Um, we looked into um, a right-handed power bat uh, at the trade deadline, pushed hard. That player didn't get moved. Um, you know, could that play, but that player didn't get moved. So we definitely did everything we could. Maybe when you're facing a lefty reliever or le- left-handed starter like Suarez twice, does that maybe lead to a home run with runners in scoring position and that flips the score? Sure. But, um, there's no one that got moved that in hindsight now, knowing what we know, um, that I believe would have changed anything in terms of the outcome. Alex, how do you assess how the decision-making might have gone at certain points during the series, whether it was lineup game one, the situation with Bryce Elder still being in the game? Uh, I know I said it. I thought he was in there too long. Facing Harper was not something that I thought was really the move, if there is such a thing. How do you actually go about assessing how a series or is it game to game, and then it adds up to a total of an assessment of how the games went? I mean, look, I talk to staff all the time. My big take, my big takeaway from this look, we're always going to, you know, scrutinize each game, and that's just part of the playoffs, right? We cover each game, you know. My big takeaway from the series was, like I said, outside of um, game three, where the score was, you know, got pretty out of hand by the end of it, we were in the other games, and obviously one of those we won. We had opportunities in the other games, and what is clearly the strength of our team and was clearly the strength of our team the entire year. Uh, you know, we had traffic, we had opportunities, we had men in score position. We just weren't able to capitalize with the big hit. And uh, that happens. You, know, you don't want it to happen. Um, we've been on the other side of it where we've come through. Um, but I think anything else, I mean, sure, we can di- dissect all kinds of things, but um, I really think, you know, that's the bottom line. I mean, we can go back through each game and I can go through, great defensive plays that were made by their so balls that we hit hard. Um, maybe just, you know, having a strikeout with a, a big spot or, and, and so on. And that's the playoffs, right? It's really close games. And um, 
you know, you look at the way we won game game two, just things can develop. But I, you know, push come to shove, I have I think every you know, I have the utmost confidence in us as an offensive team. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, the talent, the roster, the lineup speaks for itself. And I think at the end of the day, we get a few hits here and there with runners in scoring position. Um, I think we're definitely playing a game game five. But that's that didn't happen. And then you have to give the Phillies credit. You have to give their starters credit, their relievers credit. They got it done. You know, and I I really think you know, that was the that was the story for me. And um, you know, I and it, and I I sleep well at night knowing we had a very good we have a very good offensive club now and even going into 24 and, and beyond. Alex, I know in 21, um, this is going to be going over some of the things he's kind of said, but 21, just in simplest forms, a lot of guys really got hot um, after the, after the uh, trade deadline. But was, as you look back, was there any element of that team, whether it was on the roster in the clubhouse or something um, something special about that team that you think maybe has been missing the last couple of years? Something intangible? No. I, I think the fact that, I mean, we this team was awesome. I mean, when you look at it, one, we were consistent, basically. I mean, May wasn't as strong as, as April, but like I said, we got off to an unbelievable start. Um, and we, we maintained it. I don't know how many days we were in first place, but we'd gotten off to slow starts for years. And does that mean that we've solved it going forward now? I can't tell you that. But we definitely talked about it a lot and so on. Um, we went in in some big series, some big moments, and we came through. Now, we went into a big series in L.A. We hadn't won a series in L.A., I believe, since 2012. A lot on the line in a really tough environment that historically we have not performed well, whether it's that 21 team or some other teams. We went in and won three out of four with a lot on the line there, and that hadn't been done in over 10 years. We went into Phil- We were 5-1 and one against the Phillies, I think, at their place during the year. We went into Philadelphia with a chance to clinch. Um, they were playing for a lot as well. We went in and took three out of four. Um, even that that Cubs series, you know, we had already clinched. The Cubs are playing for a lot. And we played a great series. So I think, you know, you win 104 games the way we did it. We were consistent wire to wire. The room is fan- fantastic. Look, it's, it's a four-game uh, series that we lost. And, to tr- and I know, look, it's human nature that we all want to be able to pinpoint and say, Here's why. Here's the answer. Change this. Fix that. Problem solved. You win the World Series. Well, the other 12 teams, the other 11 teams, I'm sorry, are going through the same thing. And, um, you know, I I just I think it's pretty clear to me that. We were in these games. We were in the majority of these games. We had opportunities in the majority of these games, say for game three. And I think the run is in scoring position, which, again, that wasn't an issue for us. And you know, over a four-game sa- sample, we didn't come through. Had that been a 10-game sample or a 12-game sample, or had we been able to get to the World Series and win the World Series, and now we had a much longer sample size of games, maybe the runners in scoring position numbers would have been a lot lot better. But it didn't happen in this series. And obviously, a ton of credit goes to you know, the, the starters and the, the, the relievers of, the, of that team. Alex, your thoughts on players' responsibility after a series like this to sit down with the media? I know it's certainly been talked about that Ronald didn't. Um, yep. Your thoughts on what the responsibility of a player is at that point? Yeah, look, there's no doubt. Been? Yeah, so I heard about that last night. Um, I have not talked to him. I haven't talked to a, a lot of our guys. Obviously, it's fresh. Um, he's been part of five of six of these. Um, this is the first one that I'm aware of that he didn't speak after the, the game. Um, you know, obviously it, it, it's expected. There's no doubt about, about that. That's comes with the territory. Um, I haven't talked to him about it. I, I will. Uh, but without having more information, I just think when you look at the body of work um, for the six playoff runs, one of them, he was hurt. So I, I take that one out, but the other five, he was part, part of it. Uh, this was one, one out of five. He didn't do it. And um, certainly that's expected, but I do want to talk to him. Look, our other guys spoke. It's emotional to lose all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't have anything more than that, but um, I, I understand why it was a topic and certainly it's expected. Um, but 
you know what? This isn't something he's done each time. The other four times, from what I understand, he's always made himself available. So I am curious to hear from him. Um, other than it was a really tough loss and a tough, tough series. Alex, I know you said you're not one for excuses, but with if they were to ask you moving forward, should this division series be a best of seven so there's not a long layoff and one has time to, quote, unquote, catch up and the best team over seven, the best of seven wins? If we won three games to one, I'd say no. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I just look. Everyone knows the rules going in. And I know, look, I've seen the stuff online and people talking about layoffs, this, that, and so on. Um, I just think, you know, I've always felt this way. When people have asked about rule changes, shifts, this, that, we're all playing by the same rules, you know? And it's uh, you know, Josh, Donald, Josh Donaldson said it best uh, back in 2015 when I was in Toronto. He said, it's not the try league, it's the get it done league. You know, you got to get it done, you know, and that, that that's everybody. That's me. That's the whole organization, right? I mean, that's our players will say the same thing. You know, Strider said the same thing. Um, I, and, and I also think anything that, you know, I don't think it's, a, it's fair or appropriate to take away from, you know, Philadelphia Phillies came in and won, you know, and that's, I don't think it's fair to, you know, even insinuate that anything other than they played really well and they deserve to win and they have a fantastic club. So, Alex, um, going back, can you hear me okay? I'm trying to yep. do this with earpods. Okay, sure. good. <laughs> um, so to go back to what you were just saying about wishing you could pinpoint something, when you go into these meetings with the guys, because we did all talk to them, obviously, last night, and there were a bunch of guys shrugging shoulders saying, you know, they – they don't know what changed or what went wrong in these last four games other than the offense just really wasn't there. What do you ask them then to focus on, work on, try to adjust to, to change what would be an outcome a year from now? Yeah, and that's the thing. I think, you know, these guys have a long track record of being great offensive players, right? And we're excited. You know, we have the same, basically the majority of the same group um, going into 2024. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, they earned every bit of the accolades this year, the all the records they set, all that stuff. I mean, these guys are – they're established, right? They've done it year over year. And look, a bunch of them have done it in, in the playoffs. You know, they've had – these guys have – if each individual had consistently not performed in the postseason, maybe that's where individually you might look at someone and say, is there something specific that's causing you to perform during the season and not during the postseason? Now, that could certainly be a conversation, but – now, there's years some guys perform, like I mentioned. Rosario had 600 in the CS. He was hot. It's as hot as he can get. And then in the World Series, he didn't hit the same way. You know, that doesn't mean he was you know, it just – it happens. And over the course of a season, you you can easily have a four-game stretch, five-game stretch where you're not as – but I think the biggest thing is uh, in the postseason, people are game planning more, relievers are being deployed a certain way, and so on. Um, you know, the runners in scoring position thing, you know, it's – We've had it where it's gone our way this time. It did. And that's these games. Again, I know I keep saying save for game three, but there were so many moments in game one and game four um, that, man, a big hit here and there. We got the bases loaded in game one. Albies, it's a ball. 104. Trey Turner makes an unbelievable play up the middle. Um, you know, it's, you know, obviously Ozuna, it's a ball. 109. Look, that's baseball, right? I mean, we've Harris made unbelievable plays. Nick Castellanos, unbelievable at bat to hit the ball to the track, right? But that worked out for us, um, and that's the postseason. And I, and um, if it had been where we scored, and the bullpen didn't perform, or the rotation didn't perform, but we were the, the the clear strength of our team that no one had any debate on, you know, maybe you could pinpoint it a little bit more specifically, um, but we had opportunities and you know, the runners in scoring position for me, because we had our chances, you know, a hit, a timely hit here and there. I, you know, I can't tell you we win, but I, I feel very strongly, highly likely we get to a game five. Alex, we know, we know how you operate and I'm looking ahead here, maybe too far ahead, but could you foresee some extension conversations with Max, like, Based on what you've gathered, does that seem like something both sides would be interested in now that you're in that kind of one year range? Yeah. So same. I know you got to ask. So I, I'm trying to find a way to give you a new quote. Um, so same thing. Um, great players like Max Fried and others. We want to keep those guys. Everybody in the league would want to keep those guys. That goes without saying. Um, 
when it comes to contracts, extensions, this and that, we work real hard um, that no one even knows we've had a conversation, you know, and I'm not trying to misdirect or, or foreshadow or that, but um, I would never assume that we have had or have not had a conversation with anybody. Uh, Cause I would think by and large, um, our extensions haven't been discussed beforehand. Maybe, maybe a few, but for the most part, I think barring an exception or two, uh, they've been, people were aware of them when they were announced or maybe within a few hours or maybe a day or two. Um, so look, um, anybody going into their free agent year, it's going to be a topic. It's going to be asked about, of course, I expect that, um, you know, and it's, I think it's just the same thing. We love the great players who doesn't, um, and any contract talks, we work really hard to keep those extremely quiet. Alex, it's this time of year where everybody kind of cleans up their bodies. I remember a few years ago after the series, you know, Freddie Freeman had an elbow surgery. We know Kyle Wright's getting shut down. Anybody on the uh, near horizon having procedures to clear up things that they were dealing with this season? Uh, Dylan Lee had a, a cleanup uh, with his shoulder, should be ready for spring. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Um, no, I mean, Albies obviously uh, last off season, but um, no one else comes to mind right now i mean look you know the other thing too is though sometimes as the winners going along you get to december for example um you know kyle wright complained of some shoulder soreness in uh, in december but just looked like it was going to be a few weeks let it come down so you just don't know as the off season goes along guys are fine now they shut down um they start to crank back up and throwing and most of these guys are you know starters and relievers um you know, things could certainly come about in December, January. I hope not. But as of right now, other than Kyle, who will be out for all of 24, um, you know, Dylan will be ready to go for spring. Uh, Tyler Matzik, we expect, obviously, everyone's aware of his rehab. We expect him to be ready to go for spring. Uh, no one else right now. But, um, you know, the only news you guys will hear is if we think someone's someone has an injury in the offseason that's going to cause them to miss spring training or miss significant amount of time or need a surgery, then that would be something that would, we would likely announce at that time. But the really, uh, you know, uh, Kyle's the only one right now that was on this roster that, you know, that will miss 2024 that we're aware of unless things develop. Alex, have you made decisions on Charlie and or Eddie yet? No. So, you know, we obviously have uh, within five days after the world series, those will all be discussions. Um, look, they both had very good years for us. Um, I know Charlie obviously had the injury at, at the end, but if you look at just the body of work, um, you look at the number of starts he's made all the years he's been here, you know, beyond always being an incredible teammate and so on, but he logged a ton of innings, had an ERA in threes. Um, great example for all, all the guys. Then you look at, you look at Rosario says a left-handed bat over 20 home runs, made 700 OPS for us. Did a really nice job at two huge months, I believe in June and August. Um, where he just carried us. Um, so, look, those guys were really productive players. Um, I think like anything else, we have to sit back and look at what the roster looks like for 2024, um, things we want to do, how we're going to allocate our dollars, all those things. But both of those players, um, we're, we're, we're thrilled with the years that they both had. Does, uh, does Charlie's situation, like with his own decision about whether he's going to keep pitching – I know you have to make a decision on the option right after the World Series, right? What about if Yeah, I mean, not- look, anybody who has a club option, yeah, we have to make a decision within five days of the World Series. So it's always been that way. So and within five days of the World Series, we'll make a decision on those things. But, I mean, I would think like anything else, we'll have conversations with all of our guys that have options. Yates has an option. Colin McHugh has an option. Um, trying to think if I'm forgetting anybody else. I think those are the four. Yates, McHugh, uh, Rosario. Uh, Charlie, I believe, are the only four off the top of my head. Now, those are things that we'll work through. Obviously, I wish I had less time, and it was right after the World Series, and we have to scramble over the course of five days. But, um, you know, now we have more time to start planning, you know. And we we still always keep an eye on things, and we're always thinking about 24 and beyond. But, you know, now that we'll spend a lot more time on that in these next few weeks leading to the end of the World Series. Alex, do you expect anybody in another organization to ask to talk to any of your coaches? 
do I expect? Um, I'd say this. I I always hope that people in our organization, not just the coaches, anybody, get opportunities um, to, you know, to get promoted, advance themselves financially, and so on. So if they have better opportunities elsewhere, I view that as a source of pride for us. You know, if you know whatever success they've helped us achieve here, if that leads to someone else having interest in them, fantastic. We've already had two scouts. Um, that have gotten promoted and um, that, uh, you know, are in a much better spot. And uh, so you never want to lose employees and staff. That goes without saying. But I also view it as, as a great thing when, you know, the people you have here are acknowledged by other people in the industry and they get opportunities. So I would say this, when it comes to anyone on the coaching staff, uh, pro, for the most part, protocol is for the playoff teams, you wait for them to be done playing before you ask. Same thing with some of the, you know, in terms of front office and so on. You normally wait for the playoffs to end. Um, so I don't know. But, you know, we've, we've been asked in past years. And some guys have just chosen to want to stay, which is which is re- really rewarding as well. But, um, you know, for everyone's sake, if they have an opportunity to do better for themselves, I think that that's a real strength of the organization that we have people that um, other organizations think can help them. Alex, Speaking of you, Sorry? Speaking of the 2024 roster, um, what have you learned from Vaughn Grissom's 2023 season spent mostly at Gwinnett that gives you guidance for 2024? Is he going to be a, a middle infielder? Is he a left fielder? What do you see for his future? Yeah, I mean, we we had – I mean, the biggest thing is we wanted to get him reps, right? I mean, he he basically came up to the big leagues in 22. You know, I know he got to double A for a very brief, but he basically was coming out of high A when you look at just the the, the few uh, at bats that he had. So um, we wanted to get him a ton of middle infield reps. He's he had an unbelievable year offensively. The numbers speak for themselves, um, and uh, you know he's getting much better defensively as well. But look, he's he's a great athlete, and you know, that'll be something that we'll talk about as well. Um, the bat plays, the makeup, the aptitude, the energy. Uh, is an amazing teammate. Uh, you know, you want him a part of this team in some capacity. You know, but I think the thing where we have to balance is making sure that you know we can get him playing time in at bats. So if that means that now, now that Orlando solidified himself at short, obviously the other two spots at second and third are spoken for with Ozzy and um, and and Austin. Um, we'll see if there's an opportunity to to move him around and getting playing time. But you know, the fact that he can hit the way he can. And he could play on the dirt. And, you know, he's such a great clubhouse guy. Um, you know, that'll be something that we discuss in the offseason. How do we try to get him into the mix somehow where, you know, I think the only scenario where, you know, we want to make sure he plays. You know, otherwise we would have carried him. And uh, But, again, with our guys play, being everyday players, it didn't make sense to have him up here and to not, not get reps. It was one thing to do it at the end of the year or um, – but now it's. I think we're just, we're still going to have discussions of where we can get him some at bats. Alex, if you look at you know just all like you said, you have some relievers that have some options. You got left field, uh, you know Charlie Morton, Kyle Wright situation. Maybe that alters maybe your thoughts about starting pitching. Is but how beneficial is it to have as many players locked up as you do? You know, entering this offseason in terms of just. Um, just knowing not only what where how many players you have available for next year, but where the payroll sits two, three years down the line. Yeah, I think it's I think it's critically important. I think, you know, one, we know what our you know, assuming health, but you know, you look at our position player group, it's a durable group of guys. So it doesn't mean they can't get hurt, but for the most part, the track record says that they'll post and be healthy. And you know, we have a, a really good core, um lot locked up on guaranteed deals and so on. You know, I think we have eight of nine right now. Rosario's obviously got the got the option. I know we've got Darno and Murph, but in terms of just starting spots, eight of our nine are committed, and they're all durable players, and that helps a ton. I mean, that helps a ton when you're having to decide how to build out your bench. Um, it absolutely is critically important knowing how your dollars are allocated. But look, we're constantly lo- looking at what our roster looks like and our payroll looks like for not just 2024, but 25, 26, and so on. You know, we're hopeful all of our young players are going to continue to get better, go through the system, and so on. Um, so you're always trying to plan ahead for those things. But, um, I, you know, it does, in in our minds, 
we do feel like we have a very strong offensive floor and a very durable offensive core. And that allows us to, you know, make adjustments and plan accordingly. You talked about Rosario and Grissom and left field. Does left field just seem like an area where you, you might be able to go with multiple possibilities that you, you might be juggling different things in your head where you could go with that? Yeah. I mean, look, Rosario had a very good year for us. He brings balance with the left-handed bat. Um, and it was just nice to have that balance. We had real balance up and down the lineup. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with this was the best offensive club we've ever had historically. One of the best, the best I, you know, that's up for debate. Um, I think all of it, right. The balance, the group. So we have an opportunity because we have, um, because we have the option on Rosario, we have the opportunity for the most part, um, you know, to run this exact group back. Um, now, again, like anything else, um, we're going to try to get it all to fit from a payroll standpoint and so on and decide how to deploy our, our dollars. Uh, but he was great for us. You know, he was a really good compliment. He had a really good year. Look, the other point to this too is having depth was important too. You know, we had guys miss time or, you know, Orlando missed time, Vaughn, Vaughn came up and so on. We added Lopez at the trade deadline. So, you know, over the course of 162, as durable as this position player group is, you're still likely to have some injuries at some point. So Vaughn's such a great athlete. Um, we, we believe he could play anywhere on the, the diamond. Um, look, we had, we had guys like Riley, I don't know, spend a week playing outfield in Gwinnett before we called him up, even though we are committed to him playing third, third base. So um, I think with Vaughn, it's, we view him as an infielder. It's hard to find guys that can hit like that and play on the dirt. And the fact that he's played all three short third, second has real value for us, but he's athletic enough that he could play anywhere on the, on the, the diamond. But I think for us, it was making sure we continued to get him reps on the infield. Alex, Alex I do, might do me a favor. Yeah. Do me a favor. Will you just finish this sentence? The 2023 Braves. Uh, I mean, it's day after. I don't, I mean, I need time. I guess to finish that sentence because, and I'm not trying to dodge the question. It's, he ambushed me a little bit, which is fine. There's just during the season, we set records in so many areas, both individually and as a team. And I know during the season it was incredible. And then obviously in the postseason, um, you know, we didn't we weren't able to to reach our goal. So, you know, I don't know that uh, you know, maybe they write a song a, a, about us like they did uh 1998, but uh, I don't know that there's one thing, especially less than 24 hours after the fact. Um, like I mentioned, like I told you guys off top, I think my emotions will evolve over time. Um, but, you know, this is the, the day after and, you know, this is where I'm at today. Sorry, man. Any other questions for Alex? I've got one more on the top. You said that you just evaluate kind of what happens in the postseason after it happens uh, throughout your career in the postseason you've been in. How do you do that in the coming weeks? Like what questions do you ask? What people? And I guess like, how do you start to get those answers for yourself? Yeah, I think like anything, I think just the more you talk through things, talk through everything. Right. And, um, you know, you do it during the season, you do it after trade, any after drafts, after trade deadlines, look, any year you don't win the world series, which, been every year I've been here except one. Um, and even then you're still reviewing things and assessing and so on. Um, you're that's, that's what the job is, right? You're look, you know, it's competitive, you know, first and foremost, you need to get back into the postseason. So I've made the mistake before I've mentioned this to, I don't know if it's to Jeff or somebody else where um, after 20, I was so locked in on what wins in the postseason, what wins in the postseason that I lost sight of the fact that you need to get in. And we almost didn't, didn't get in. Um, now we ended up winning, but you know, I, you, we almost missed being able to get in. So, um, I think, you know, we had some initial conversations today, um, uh, really good conversations and similar conversations that I've had in the past. And I definitely have, as I sit here today, I'm not going to share it just because from a competitive standpoint, um, it's going to shape our off season and some of the things that we do. Um, but I definitely have. Uh, a specific takeaway in terms of how we might approach the off season, uh, what we might do, which 
all ties in now. Look, r- regardless, still need guys to have good seasons. Guys got to stay healthy. And that goes without saying. Um, but, you know, I always I always look at these things as what can I do in my role as general manager to build the best team, best roster, give Snit and the coaches and, and, and the players the best talent around them, the best group, the best clubhouse, all of it. And um, unless you win the World Series, you know you could have got better, right? You know that hey, we could have had a little bit more of this, a little bit. Like I talked about having, you know, we were we were looking for for bullpen and rotation at the deadline. There weren't fits that we thought made sense, and I think you know ultimately there's when we look at the way it played out, we're very comfortable with that. And we did move on to getting a bat, you know, right-handed power bat, and then. You know, had we been able, and that player didn't get moved, but had we been able to do that, maybe that shifts the series. Does that mean you win in the CS? Unless you're winning the World Series, you know, it, only one team ends up getting to do these and saying, hey, it worked, we won the World Series. So um, you're constantly looking to get better. Thank you.